And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the talk by our fearless leader, Samrat. Right. Thanks, Joan. So this is perhaps the first conference I'm speaking in where I don't need to thank the organizer. <laughs> however, I would, <laughs> yes, that's what I was going to. So however, I would like to thank Betsy being such a wonderful uh, co-organizer. And I have really enjoyed uh, working with you for, this, for the planning of this conference. And I'm, uh, it's, it's great, Betsy. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks to all of you for coming. So, uh, <clears throat> so today I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the new stuff I've been doing for the past couple of years, biological water in intrinsically disordered proteins. And uh, we are fascinated about water and proteins. Uh, before uh, the talk, I would like to acknowledge uh, the highly talented and motivated crew members. And you might have seen many of them. Uh, they're all volunteers. Uh, Anupa, Hema, Karishma, Priyanka Dogra, Priyanka Madhu, Debapriya, Aishwarya, and Sayanta. And Many of my former lab members are now doing postdoc, and uh, Neha is here. Uh, so she has been working with Matt Chapman for the past four years. She was my first graduate student, and Saurav is also here, who did uh, postdoc in my lab. So I've been quite fortunate to have them in my lab, and they have tremendously uh, contributed to the uh, to the growth of the lab. And all of them have posters. Therefore, I've decided to talk about uh, Shruti's work, who has just gone to UC Santa Barbara for her postdoc. So I have also been very fortunate to have uh, generous funding from IISCR Mohali and several other uh, national and international funding agencies. And my collaborators, wonderful collaborators. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you about uh, femtosecond spectroscopy experiments which are done in collaboration with Aninda Datta at IIT Bombay. And of course, the uh, molecular dynamic simulations were carried out by Payal Das, who is going to uh, speak tomorrow. And I also have uh, other collaborators. We have recently started collaboration with uh, Richard Krivaki, and I'm quite excited about the collaborations that are going on at this point. So my lab has been quite interested in looking at the conformational excursion of proteins from the intrinsically disordered state to the folded state to the misfolded state through a range of conformational states uh, from uh, expanded uh, chain to collapsed chain to folded membrane bound state. The questions that we are asking is how an ensemble of different conformational states aggregate to uh, a diverse range of exquisite nanostructures, predominantly amyloid structures, which are shown over here. These are atomic force microscopy images that are captured in our lab. So <clears throat> from oligomers to uh, ring-like, pore-like structures, uh, different kinds of fibrils, and we ask the question how these different nanoscale morphologies are related to disease and function. The reason I'm also mentioning function because we are also interested in a variety of functional amyloids. We want to understand how the sequence structure paradigm can be extended to nanoscopic scale to, to address uh, how uh, some of the amyloids are disease causing, detrimental amyloids, some of them are, are actually functional, benign amyloids. So we need to understand how some of these amyloids can riddle the neurons, ravage the brain, and how some of the other amyloids can actually uh, be functional. They are quite friendly to, uh, to uh, physio under physiological condition. So we have been asking these kind of questions. And of course, for today's talk, this is actually uh, sort of like a, uh, layout of uh, the research that is going on in my lab for the past eight years or so. But today I'm going to tell you how 
water structures, how we probe water structures in the intrinsically disordered state, and how we make predictions that from the disordered state, how they go to the ordered state like amyloid fibrils. Okay. So before going into the water, I'll tell you a little bit about the properties of the polypeptide chain, the dynamic properties of the polypeptide chain. So uh, as we all know that intrinsically disordered proteins can be described by polymer physics theories. Uh, so uh, on, one limit, uh, on one hand, you have a compact globule where you have predominantly chain chain interaction and chain, uh, and on the other hand, you have chain solvent interactions, is oil solvated, and somewhere in between where chain chain and chain solvent interactions are counterbalanced, you have uh, flowy random coil. Clearly, water molecules play a pivotal role in, in uh, governing the structural ensemble as well as the dynamics of polypeptide chain. So we have been quite interested in, the, uh, in, in deciphering the, the, the co conformational dynamics of the polypeptide chain as well as the water molecules associated with, with the polypeptide chain. And here, of course, you can imagine if a polypeptide chain is collapsed, so you can imagine it's like a wet globule. So it is, you can, water could be akin to nano-confined water because the water is confined into a small volume. Whereas if you have a polypeptide chain which is highly expanded, you have water molecules which are probably flowing through the polypeptide chain uh, on a much faster time scale. So this is the paradigm and this, uh, so we have been testing this using our experiments. So first, let me tell you uh, that we have been working on quite a few intrinsically disordered proteins, and of course, uh, one of which is alpha-synuclein, which is an expanded coil, which is, uh, so these, are, these experiments have been done in the past to show alpha-synuclein exists as an expanded coil, and there are other IDPs uh, that are collapsed like kappa casein. There are other proteins like tau and protein melanosome, PML, which are in between these two uh, limits. So we have experimental systems that we can, we can, we can use to sort of, sort of understand uh, conformational dynamics of polypeptide chain and water, uh, uh, you know, depending on the, uh, in the conformational preference of the IDPs. Now, uh, we have been quite interested in alpha-synuclein. It is associated with Parkinson's disease, and we have been working on alpha-synuclein for a, for, a, for a number of years now. And uh, when it aggregates, it forms the legomers and fibrils, and we, uh, we are uh, investigating how molecular chaperones are involved in uh, the transition as well as inhibition of, uh, of uh, aggregation of alpha-synuclein. I would like to show you a, a structural ensemble of monomeric intrinsically disordered alpha-synuclein. And the structures are actually, uh, because it's very difficult to get a structure of an intrinsically disordered protein. So from NMR <coughs> paramagnetic relaxation enhancement measurement, what you get is a structural ensemble. And that was earlier published by Dobson and Vendoskala. Uh, in 2009. So these structural uh, data are deposited in a database called uh, Protein Ensemble Database. So we have actually used uh, uh, this particular PED entry to uh, create this structural ensemble. There are 50 structures that are overlaid. And we have also used this particular image for our conference logo. So if you have seen our abstract book, this is what we have used uh, on our abstract book. And this structure was actually made uh, by Karishma in association with the other members of the lab. So if you look at the radius of gyration, the mean radius of gyration uh, is about 34 angstrom, which suggests that it's actually an expanded IDP. Of course, there are collapsed uh, uh, populations, but it's predominantly expanded. And uh, so at this point, we'd like to ask the question, how? Uh, each structure uh, interconverts from this structure to this structure to this structure. So this interconversion 
happens, uh, occurs through the uh, dihedral uh, relaxation, which I was talking about, the phi psi uh, relaxation. And I was quite interested at some point to understand the intrinsic phi psi dihedral relaxation in an intrinsically disordered protein. But how do you study them? So <laughs> there are several things we measure, one of which is, uh, of course, uh, structural propensity, chain dimension, and dynamics. And we are also beginning to understand a little bit about internal friction that arises due to dihedral dynamics and end-to-end -end distance and hydration dynamics. Let me first tell you a little bit about uh, the measurements that we are making to understand the intrinsic uh, dihedral relaxation uh, in IDPs. So we use uh, fluorescence anisotropy. Of course, this uh, anisotropy measurements have been already discussed. But what we use here is time-resolved anisotropy. So we use a laser pulse, which is polarized. And we can excite the fluorophore. And as you uh, 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 know that, uh, the, uh, so it, it excites uh, uh, particular uh, orientation because of uh, selection, photo selection rules. So you're exciting a certain population of fluorophores, and you are actually watching how the, the, the relaxation of that dipole occurs as a function of time on the time scale of picoseconds to nanoseconds. So we're actually uh, measuring the depolarization kinetics, and from depolarization kinetics, you can actually uh, recover the fast local motion and the slow global motion of a protein, of a folded globular protein. Now, if you unfold the protein, what happens is, if you have a probe, of course, it's now unfolded. Therefore, there is a lot of internal dynamics going on, internal dynamics that's happening, uh, that's going on uh, via phi side dihedral relaxation. And of course, you begin to see a different time scale uh, uh, in the, in the uh, fluorescence depolarization kinetics. So now, if you unfold the protein, so if you, for a globular protein, of course, you are looking at uh, the tumbling of the entire uh, globule. And if you unfold the protein, you are essentially looking at the phi psi dihedral relaxation. Okay, so that was the hypothesis. And of course, we uh, created a large number of single tryptophan mutants of uh, alpha-synuclein. The advantage is uh, alpha-synuclein doesn't contain any tryptophan, any cysteine. Therefore, you can actually add tryptophan and cysteine by side-directed mutagenesis. And we have added tryptophan. These are all single trip mutants. These tryptophan mutations are not on the same polypeptide chain. So you have uh, different single trip mutants. And you can measure fluorescence depolarization kinetics or fluorescence anisotropy decays. And from these decays, uh, we have been able to obtain an intrinsic time scale which actually corresponds to the uh, torsional mobility on the phi psi dihedral map uh, with, a, which, uh, with, a, with a characteristic time scale which uh, uh, matches very well with statistical Kuhn segment of the, uh, of the unfolded protein. So we have been able to really uh, get a signature for an expanded polypeptide chain. So if you do these measurements, and if you get this time scale, uh, fluorescence anisotropy decay time scale, that means that this polypeptide chain is actually unfolded or expanded. And if, we, if we have a collapsed uh, polypeptide chain, you would not actually observe this. We have done uh, many experiments. We have published quite a few papers on this. So if you, if you have a collapsed polypeptide chain, of course, you are going to, lo you are going to uh, look at the tumbling of the entire globule because it's a collapsed polypeptide chain. So we can actually distinguish using fluorescence depolarization measurements. You can actually distinguish uh, the collapsed IDPs as opposed to the, uh, the expanded IDPs. So now we, of course, establish using this uh, 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 methods that uh, uh, alpha-synuclein is an expanded IDP. And of course, we are trying to understand the dynamics of various other IDPs. So my next question is, uh, how, what is the behavior of water molecules? So uh, there is a, uh, so uh, Biman Bakchi from, in, uh, from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, has done 
some remarkable work to understand the water molecules around the protein water interface. So his studies and later on many experiments performed by uh, late Ahmed Zawel indicated that the protein uh, uh, interface water has some distinct uh, dielectric and dynamic properties. They are very different from bulk water and this water layer was actually termed as biological water layer. So <coughs> there is different exchange time scale and it has been shown that this water layer, biological water layer plays an important role in enzyme catalysis, folding, protein-protein interactions, protein-DNA interactions and so forth. So uh, we have been quite interested, have been uh, fascinated about water for, for, for many years now and uh, I have been able to now create a large number of uh, single system mutants uh, of synuclein. So I wanted to know what is the uh, behavior of water around uh, the IDP, uh, uh, synuclein uh, uh, in particular. So how do you probe that? Because water is nearly the most uh, concentrated is 55.56 uh, molar. How do you probe water? Uh, uh, in, in uh, the protein uh, uh, interface water, because that tiny little amount of water, how do you detect? Because water is optically silent. You can't, there aren't too many measurements by which you can actually observe the uh, water that is close to the polypeptide chain. So we uh, adopted the technique, uh, 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 fluorescence technique. So if you have a fluorescent dye, normally we uh, make a single cysteine mutant in this particular case, and we uh, attach a fluorescent dye, the dye which has a huge stock shift, it demonstrates huge stock shift like acrylodan, for example, there are other dyes. So what you are actually doing using a femtosecond laser pulse, you are exciting uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, fluorophore, uh, excitation occurs on the femtosecond time scale, and uh, uh, at the excited state, of course, what you have now done uh, upon excitation, you have instantaneously created a new dipole moment because it has now got excited uh, uh, on a very fast time scale. But the water movements are much slower. Now, water is a dipolar solvent. So water molecules have to now reorient themselves to stabilize the instantaneously created dipole. So you are actually monitoring the water mobility around the instantaneously created dipole. So it gets de-excited on the, at the excited state, okay, from the frank condon state to the solvent relaxed state. And if you put a fluorophore in bulk water, what you actually capture is the mobility of bulk water uh, around the fluorophore, which occurs typically on the, uh, you know, one to 10 picosecond. And of course, there is a femtosecond component and this field has been quite uh, active in physical chemistry. People have been looking at different models of water relaxation. And uh, so, uh, so basically, uh, within 10 picosecond, the water uh, relaxation is complete. So therefore, that's a signature of a bulk water. So what you are actually doing, you have an absorption spectrum, you have a fluorescence spectrum, you have a stock shift, there's a steady state, representative steady state spectrum. And if you do a time dependent uh, experiment, what you're looking at is how the fluorescence spectrum uh, shifts from the absorption spectrum to the steady state fluorescence spectrum. And you are doing a time domain experiments on the femtosecond time scale and you are looking at how water is moving. And of course, as I said, for bulk water, it is uh, within 10 picosecond. And uh, we'll, uh, so we can actually construct from this uh, spectra, you can construct hydration correlation function. From the hydration correlation function, you can actually get uh, the solvation time or hydration time. So we can get a characteristic hydration time for, uh, as I mentioned, for bulk water is about uh, 10 picosecond. And we have used uh, femtosecond techniques that was pioneered by Ahmed Zewel at Caltech. So as I have already mentioned that we have uh, created a, a, a several single system mutants uh, along the polypeptide chain and all the single system mutants uh, uh, have, are uh, similar to wild type uh, uh, that we have tested using a variety of experiments. And we have installed uh, a fluorescent dye acrylodan which is highly solvent, 
uh, uh, which has a large stroke shift, and we could show that all the different positions uh, in uh, alpha synuclein steady state spectra are actually very similar. Okay, and I need to uh, tell you that uh, alpha synuclein uh, polypeptide chain sequence is uh, divided into three distinct regions. One is the N-terminal region, which typically binds to membrane, and the NAC domain non-amyloid beta component domain, which is uh, hydrophobic and which actually triggers aggregation. And you have a C-terminal domain, which is uh, acidic domain, binds to calcium, binds to other uh, metal ions. And, uh, and of course, this particular region, NAC domain uh, 61 to 95, this particular region is involved in uh, amyloid transition. So uh, we carried out this femtosecond experiments. Uh, so these are some of the typical femtosecond uh, transients. Uh, so what we do uh, is uh, we excite the sample and at different uh, wavelengths we collect fluorescence decay on the pico, uh, femtosecond to picosecond time scale. And from this whole bunch of decays, we actually construct the, uh, the time uh, resolved emission spectra. And, and as you might have noticed, this is converted into wave number. So the shift is from the right to the left, okay? Because it's just reverse of wavelength. So what you're looking at is uh, time dissolved emission spectra from zero picosecond to 200 picosecond. And we can construct the uh, hydration correlation function from this uh, set of uh, uh, time dissolved spectra. And if you uh, construct hydration spec, uh, correlation spe uh, plots, you can see that uh, these are some, some of the representative plots. In the N-terminal region, uh, so you can see a predominantly, you see a bulk water because it's relaxing almost within 10 picosecond time scale. You can actually analyze this using uh, 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 a sum of exponential model. And uh, of course, uh, C-terminal is even faster. And one of those uh, in, the, in the NAC domain 78 position is, uh, of course, has a huge amount of bulk water, but this is a little bit slower. Now, if you put them together, if you overlay the hydration correlation function, you can actually see that uh, one of the residues that reside in the NAC domain actually has uh, some unrelaxed component, much higher unrelaxed component on the uh, 200 picosecond time scale, which uh, it tells you that although there is a uh, predominantly bulk water component, which you expect because it's an expanded uh, IDP, so you can expect a huge amount of bulk water penetration into the polypeptide chain. But if you look at the amplitude of uh, the slower component, you could really uh, capture that there is a slow water component uh, in the NAC domain of the, of the protein, which is, which is responsible for aggregation. So uh, you can do uh, a variety of ways of analysis, unrelaxed component, so salvation time analysis, you can actually analyze in different ways. And we actually found that this is much slower component is of, uh, of the order of 200 to 300 picosecond component, okay? Which means that this particular region, the NAC domain act, contains water molecules which are highly restrained. At least the fraction of water molecules are highly restrained in the NAC domain of the polypeptide chain. So uh, this is a, a cartoon that was drawn by Shruti uh, for her thesis. And now Pyle has some very nice uh, MD simulations. So uh, I'll show you uh, this. This is uh, Shruti had drawn in PowerPoint, but I'll show you. So Pyle had actually carried out some really remarkable uh, uh, you know, MD simulation experiments. The advantage of uh, MD simulation is you can precisely ask some, some of the questions because in the experiment, you don't really know what's happening at different parts of the protein. In MD simulation, you can actually ask some precise questions that what is happening to the residence time of water, how long water is you know, staying at the surface of the protein or the polypeptide chain in this case, 
and OH bond autocorrelation functions because we are monitoring the OH bond autocorrelations. So water movement is actually reflected how fast OH bond autocorrelation function is uh, uh, decayed. And you can look at H uh, hydrogen bonding lifetime because this water mobility is driven by the making and breaking of hydrogen bonds. So you can look at a variety of different parameters from AMD simulations, including translational dynamics. And all of these data actually show that the NAC domain is indeed contained some slow water. Uh, as you can see, the NAC domain uh, uh, as, uh, exhibits slow uh, dynamics in all this analysis. And this uh, is a nice picture that shows uh, constellation of uh, slow water molecules around the NAC domain. And uh, my movie was not working properly. Therefore, I have actually opened in a on a different window. So you can see some of the water molecules. There's a NAC domain. These water molecules are not departing on the 200 picosecond time scale. So they are just there, right? So these water molecules are possibly the water fraction that we are capturing through our femtosecond experiments. So uh, I, so basically what we propose is uh, uh, so we have shown that upon amyloid formation, you see a shift at different parts of the protein. If you look at uh, the fluorescent probes at different parts of the protein. So what we propose is aggregation of alpha-synuclein proceeds via expulsion of ordered water molecules, which is entropically favored because now your ordered water molecules are getting released upon chain sequestration and oligomerization and fibril for fibril formation, so it's entropically highly favorable. So this is uh, something which we have uh, proposed for uh, aggregation. And of course, Pyle has done some extensive analysis to show how the water molecules are arranged in, in, the, in the NAC domain. So uh, uh, this paper is under review. Hopefully, it will get accepted at some point. So we have also done experiments with a variety of other IDPs to sort of understand the properties of water. For example, as you can see here, casein being a collapsed IDP shows very slow water, which means it, and in fact, we have talked about it. Uh, so when it forms a wet globule, so water is highly restrained in the wet globule. So you have uh, very slow movement. So water is actually uh, sort of like a nano-confined water in, in collapsed IDPs. So we can now study expanded and collapsed IDPs and try to understand how they are related to protein aggregation. This is almost my last slide. Uh, so we have recently studied the aggregation uh, uh, you know, uh, using femtosecond spectroscopy. And we could, uh, we could sort of uh, clearly uh, see different types of waters and with different kinds of waters uh, uh, in an order of magnitude time scale. And we could, we could show that how water rearrangements takes place during amyloid formation. All right, so I would like to just, this is my last slide. There are a bunch of posters from our lab, uh, as you expect. So uh, uh, Karishma has a poster on HSP synuclein interaction. Hema has a poster on Carli and LPS interaction. Uh, we are interested in energy migration in amyloids. Anupa has a poster on this. Priyanka Dogra is working on PML, uh, poster number 51. Uh, Priyanka Madhu is working on prion and amyloid beta interaction. Aishwarya is working on uh, prion and lipid interaction, uh, how the conformational change occurs in the presence of lipid. Uh, Devapriya is working on uh, ultrafast spectroscopy and we are trying to quantify internal friction from some of these measurements. And Sayanta has a poster, actually this work was done by Dominic and Sayanta is continuing. And Sandhya has a poster on East prion strains. Uh, so we are trying to distinguish prion strains using some of the ultrafast signature of the protein. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Samrat. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat>
Oh, oh right. So, for the alpha syndicate, it's easy to put it into this alpha helical structure. Now, did you try this and see how the yeah. water behaves? Yeah, yeah. So that's something which, in fact, we had a paper a couple of years ago where we could show some of this, uh, some part of alpha synuclein actually goes to a membrane. Uh, so membrane also has ultra slow water, very highly organized water in the water membrane interface. Uh, Amit Chattopadhyay has done some really nice work on that. So basically, uh, so part of this uh, alpha synuclein uh, chain goes to the membrane water interface, which also has highly restrained water molecules. So there is a a uh, little bit of a problem to sort of decouple, you know, the protein water and membrane water. So, but yeah, that's something which we would love to do that. In fact, uh, we are also planning to do some NMR uh, diffusion order spectroscopy to look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, water relaxation and IDPs and amyloids and membranes uh, in the, mem uh, yeah. So okay. that's something which we are. Yeah, uh, Sanrat, yeah. Well, great work. Remind me in my time in Champagne Urbana 30 years ago, <laughs> when acrylodon was uh, synthesized. Uh, uh, so, I, uh, uh, my question is Have you done the same experiments with the uh, oligomers? Because yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you have a site specific lately. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so, yeah, that's a, that's a great question because that's something which, which we are looking forward to. It's a very difficult experiment because uh, these experiments take, uh, you know, for for very long time. So you have to make different kinds of oligomers, and that's something which we are planning to do. So uh, the idea is how the water uh, relaxation changes, the water structure changes as a function of aggregation kinetics. So you monitor aggregation kinetics using independently, like thioflavin T or, you know, AFM, and you monitor water uh, relaxation. So that's something which we are trying to do. Uh, yeah, that would be really cool, yeah. And just a comment, uh, tomorrow I'll present very quickly some of the nuclear work, but with pressure, you do the opposite. You can push water and take the more Okay, yeah. yeah. So. I mean, under pressure also one could study uh, this kind of uh, uh, femtosecond experiments. That would yeah, be really definitely nice. Definitely, you should. That would be amazing, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Samrat, beautiful work. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, since you have these simulations combined with your experiments now, can you give us an estimate of how many waters there are around an expanded IDP that actually can qualify as measurably slower? Yeah, so uh, we have actually measured from some of this uh, because uh, we have a large number of simulation traces. and. Uh, so the, if you look at the ultra slow component, which is uh, slower than 200 picoseconds, so anything that is 200, uh, slower than 200 picoseconds, we have actually categorized that as ultra slow. So if you look at uh, the simulation traces uh, in the NAC domain, there are at least five water molecules that never departed the NAC domain. Because simulations also we have carried out till about one nanosecond because we have, uh, for, you know, for a, for a, I mean, we have carried out much longer simulations, but at least five water molecules are just there forever. So, so we think that when two polypeptide chains come together, uh, NAC domain especially, uh, and then they sequester into some kind of, they get nucleated into forming uh, a beta sheet structure, and now we have a huge entropic benefit by relieving the water molecules into the bulk milieu. So that's something which, which actually makes the amyloid formation happen in a much more facile way. Samrat. So some IDPs populate different, you know, substates that fluctuate on, you know, the 100, nan 100 nanosecond, microsecond time right. scale. But this time scale is really slow in comparison to the time scale of the we have access to so you so have you have you seen examples in your the experiments you've done so far where you see you know a variety of different uh, decay times yes so that's a very good question actually so uh, of course there are you can perform uh, a variety of different kinds of analysis 
and to uh, you can uh, you can sort of uh, and different kinds of experiments uh, coupled with analysis to uh, sort of assign different population to different water structure that will be really cool and that will actually help a uh, question that uh, Jerson asked uh, when we look at the oligomeric populations, we know monomers, we know amyloids, we can actually assign some of these things and we can recover the intermediate population. So that will be really fantastic. And uh, you can do uh, uh, so, you know, different kinds of analysis like maximum entropy method analysis to sort of so, uh, recover some of these time scales and that will correspond to the population that we are talking about. I think this will be really uh, exciting. We have one final question. Hi, Thomas. I have a question regarding which water molecules you're really seeing. I mean, you see the water around the tryptophan. Uh, here, in this case, acrylodan. Because we have, see, tryptophan is not the best probe for these experiments. Okay, yeah, yeah acrylodan. But how many water layers do you see? Or are these water molecules that Very nice bound question. between your dye yes. and or your Absolutely and, right. And protein. Great question. Because uh, what happens is, uh, if you look at the linker and the dye, it's less than five angstrom. So it's about five angstrom. So when we do the simulation, again, uh, I'm relating to Betsy's question. When we do the simulation, we have actually looked at uh, five angstrom from the polypeptide chain. You can also look at 10 angstrom. We have looked at 20 angstrom. But, uh, uh, but in order to sort of, sort of uh, uh, you know, understand what we are seeing in the experiment, uh, we have looked at five angstrom from the polypeptide chain. So it's a cylinder around the polypeptide chain with a five angstrom uh, radius. We have also done 10 angstrom. And uh, the moment you do 10 angstrom, it's all bulk water. It's a very tiny fraction because it's outside five angstrom, it's everything bulk. And it, it relaxes on the, you know, you know, less than 10 picosecond, four to five picoseconds. It's very local through your, through yeah. your common form. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very local, and that's the part of the technique because now you're selecting a tiny, uh, you know, millimolar or nanomolar or whatever uh, water concentration from 55.555 molar water. So that's why, you know, I mean, I think that's kind of cool that, you know, you're selecting a very tiny fraction that's close to the protein. Otherwise, the expa I mean, it's all bulk water everywhere. Okay, let's thank Sudipta and Samrat. Thank you. And all the speakers of this afternoon. Thank and you.